Hi guys, welcome to the channel again. In today's video, we are going to install Ubuntu 19.10 dual booting with Windows 10, but on a separate hard drive. So let's dive right into it. So here we are in Windows 10, and let's have a look here at the disk management by right-clicking on the Start menu. And we're going to see our two disks here. I'm going to center the window here. So as you can see, we have our Windows disk here with the recovery partition. We have our EFI partition here and the C drive of the Windows installation. And we have our second disk here, which is at the moment unallocated space. And this is where I want to install Ubuntu. So now we can go ahead and download the Ubuntu ISO and burn it to a USB stick and boot your machine from there. In my case here, I am in VirtualBox, so I'll do this a little differently, but on your PC, you will just insert your USB stick and start your computer from there. So let me close up this window here and I'll exit full screen and I will just power off the machine for now because I need to mount the ISO from Ubuntu. And I'll start up VirtualBox here, go into settings and under storage where the CD is, I'll just attach my Ubuntu image, which is on my desktop right now. There you go. And now I can click start to start the machine. If you're booting up your computer from the USB stick, you will now be seeing the same steps as me. So I wanna try Ubuntu. So I'll select the first option here so that I can see if everything works well in the machine. So I'll just hit enter here to start Ubuntu. And I'm gonna go full screen here. So I think Ubuntu will recognize my card. So there you go. Now we are logged in in Ubuntu. Everything is small because I have a 4K monitor here. Let me just bump up here the resolution shortly so that you can see better what's going on. I'll click to 200% and click apply and keep the changes. And there you go. Now everything is nice and clear. So I'll close up the window here and now we are ready to install Ubuntu. So I see everything is working by me here. I have an internet connection here with my cable because this is connected through VirtualBox. If you don't have this and you have Wi-Fi, you can go down here and you will see a Wi-Fi menu here where you can select your network and enter your password. If you don't, don't worry because the driver for your Wi-Fi card will be installed during the installation and you can connect to the internet later. So let's get started here by double clicking on install Ubuntu. There you go. So I'll choose English as my language and I click continue. And for my keyboard layout here, I have to look for my layout because this is not the US keyboard I have right now here. And then I click continue. Now here you can choose whether to have a normal installation, that means with the browser, utilities, and some other packages, or a minimal installation, just the web browser and basic utilities. I go for the normal installation here, and yes, I choose to download updates while installing Ubuntu, and I choose also to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. I recommend you click this if you don't have any chance to connect to Wi-Fi here from this menu. And then you click continue. So here we have a few selections on how to install Ubuntu. And because we want to install Ubuntu on a second drive, we'll just click on something else and click continue. And as you can see here, we have our SDA. This is the first disk where Windows is installed, which has already his partitions done here. We have our EFI partition here and the Windows partition is SDA4. And then we have free space for SDB. This is the second drive where we want to install Ubuntu. And as you can see, Windows here already made a small partition of 16 megabytes, which we can actually delete. So we'll click on this and hit the minus sign. And now we have the free space here. So I'm clicking on the free space and I'm going to create three partitions, one boot partition, one swap partition and a root home partition. So I'm going to click on the plus and for the boot partition, I'm going to type in 512. I want the boot partition to be 512 megabytes and I'll leave the file system as is. And I need to give the boot flag to the mount point. So I'll select boot here for the menu and click OK. Now scroll down again to the free space and click plus again. And for the swap place, I will give the swap place four gigabytes. So I'll type in 4,000 because this is in megabytes. And from the list here of file types, I'll select swap area and click OK. And I'll scroll down again to free space and click the plus sign again and leave here by defaults because I want the root home partition to have the rest of the disk. And I accept the file system here. And under mount point, I select the root mount point and click OK. 
And now for device for bootloader installation, we have to be careful what we choose here. So this is a UEFI system. That means we need to choose the EFI partition of Windows, which is SDA2 in our case. As you can see also here, we have SDA2 type EFI. So make sure that you select that partition here and then you can hit install now and accept the changes to the disk by clicking continue. Now you can select your time zone here. This is recognized automatically because I have internet. So I click continue and I'll create a new user here. So I'll type in my name and choose a machine name. and pick a username and a password and retype it. And yes, I want to require my password to log in. So then I can click continue. And now we just wait for the system to finish in the install and I'll be back in a moment. So the installation is now complete and we can restart the machine. So I'll just click restart now. And we should now see the bootloader with Ubuntu and Windows 10. So let's see what's happened now. So if you still have your USB stick in your computer, just remove it now and then press enter. I'll do this right now because I know my ISO has already been deleted from the system. And as you can see, we have now the menu here. We have Ubuntu. This is the first in the list and we have Windows 10. So let's put up once Ubuntu and see if everything works well. And I'll log into my account here. And I'll probably have to resize the screen again because this is not anymore the live install. There you go. So online accounts, I'm going to skip these for now and send information to Canonical. Well, why not? They're doing this for free. They click next location services. I let it like this and click done. So I'll just resize my display and I'll click on 200% here and click apply and keep changes and there you go. I see I have internet here and I'll just pull up the terminal shortly to check for updates. And I'll type in sudo apt-get update to update the databases first and my password. And then pull up the same command with the up arrow and type in upgrade to upgrade the packages. And see, I have 176 packages to be upgraded. I'm not going to do this now, but if you do have this, I strongly recommend you to do that. I just want to get out of the terminal now and go back into Windows because I want to show you also how to remove Ubuntu and also how to remove Grub. So let me boot up back in Windows. So I'm going to click up here to the menu and click restart. And this time I'm going to select Windows and I'll log in. There you go. So I go back to the disk management by right clicking on the start menu and I want to have a look at my disks again. So as you can see, we have the three partitions we created before in Ubuntu. We have our EFI partition, our swap partition and the primary partition. So if you want to delete those partitions and reuse this disk with Windows or maybe install another Linux distro, you can just remove them and create a new partition in there. So I'll just go ahead and right click on the first one and click delete volume and then hit yes. And I'll do the same for the other two. So I'll right click, hit yes. There you go. We have now our disk free here. It's unallocated space. That means if we want to use it in Windows, we should right click on this and click on new simple volume so that we can create a new volume which will be recognized then in the system. However, the problem is we have still Grub installed in the EFI partition here in Windows and we need to remove this. Otherwise, we will see it again the next time we boot the machine. So let me close this up and go back to the start menu here, right clicking on this and select the Windows PowerShell and I'll choose the administrator version and click yes. So the EFI partition in Windows is normally hidden and we need to make it visible before we can work on it. And in order to do that, we'll use a program called disk part. So on the Windows PowerShell here, we'll just type in disk part and hit enter. And we want to list the volumes. So we'll type in list volume and hit enter. Volume zero is the CD-ROM. This is empty right now. We have volume one. This is our recovery partition. And then we have volume two, which is 
our C drive where Windows is installed. And then we have volume 3, which is the FAT32 partition. This is our EFI system. Note that the second disk is not visible here because it doesn't have any recognizable partition yet. So we need to select volume 3. And how we do that, we just type in select vol3 and hit enter. And volume 3 is the selected volume. So we need to give now this volume a letter so that it can be recognized. So we'll type in assign letter equal. You can choose a free letter in the system. In my case, I'll choose X and hit enter. So we go now to the Windows Explorer. We'll see that the X partition appears when we click on this PC. There you go. But if we double click on it, we cannot access it. Even I click continue, it still denies access. So let me close this up and we'll search here for task manager and click on the app. And here we want to click on more details if it's the first time you run this and then click on file and run a new task. Then click on browse, go to this PC. And now if you double click on the X partition, you have access to it. So we can double click now on the EFI folder. And as you can see, we have three folders here. We have boot, we have Microsoft and Ubuntu. And this is the only folder we need to remove. So let's right click on the Ubuntu folder and select delete and confirm by hitting yes. And now we can cancel out this window. So by hitting cancel here and hitting cancel also here and close Task Manager. Now remember we need to remove the X letter from the system, otherwise it will be still visible. So we'll type in remove letter equal X. And we can exit now Windows PowerShell by typing in exit. And we can close now the program. Now, if we try to reboot the system, we'll see that Grub is gone and will boot directly into Windows. So let's try this out. As you can see, it boots directly into Windows. That means we removed successfully the Grub bootloader. There you go, guys. This is how to install Ubuntu 19.10 dual booting with Windows 10 from a secondary hard drive. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subs to the channel. Subs really help us out, guys. And if there is anything specific you want me to cover or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.